I'm co-host James Ash. And I'm co-host Phil Scaife. Welcome to The Business Lockdown. On today's episode of the podcast, uh, Business Lockdown, we kickstart this week with Tony and Martin from Move Ahead Media. Now, Tony and Martin join us from the bright lights of Bangkok today. Uh, Move Ahead Media covers Asia, uh, Australia, and also London, which we're excited to learn more about. So, guys, welcome. Thanks for joining us on the show today. Thanks for having us, guys. It's yep. uh, great to be here from Bangkok. Yeah, uh, welcome <laughs> to the show, guys. We're very jealous. <laughs> very jealous so so let's start with uh like for the audience bringing them up to speed uh two gents from twickenham and watford uh end up uh, with a global media company in bangkok that's that sounds like it's gonna be quite a journey how uh, how how did that look what what happened well uh, it first started um uh, well 12 years ago i'd say we've, we've had move red media now for 10 years um, but Martin and I met each other at our previous company. He was the operations director. I was the, uh, the sales manager there. One reason or another led to, you know, thinking we could do better. And, um, and we set up Move Ahead Media. And it's our 10th, 10th anniversary this year. So, the, um, yeah, so, so pleased with that. Have you always been in media then? Or, or was, there, um, was there a shift at all? We've been in sales at Barabas. We've, uh, Quite a checkered background. I moved more into sort of operations about 20 years ago when I first came out to Thailand. The um, and uh, but Tony's pretty much stayed mainly in sales and uh, mm. pretty prolific at it. So uh, yeah, well, I, I was a butcher. Me. I was a butcher before it all, and then I, I broke my wrist. So um, I went into sales, and then yeah, sold uh, all <laughs> before going into the digital world. Right, and very so interesting. So then you're in you're in Thailand. Was there an opportunity that you spotted? Was the or or was it a, a natural when you two met that the, that was a natural path to go in for this for the start of Move Ahead? Well, I'd say that it was a sort of a natural path because we're it's a couple of years or so we at the previous. We, we worked together, yeah, um, and we were pretty much sort of responsible for the day to day running of the um, uh, the other company and. We want to do things our own way, and, and the main thing was is we, we get on as business partners very well. We we see things very similarly, uh, which is very helpful. One thing we, we've got quite a few friends in the industry um, that have our own companies, and one thing we're quite fortunate about is working as a partnership rather than mm. independently, because um, that that gives us a lot to to play off from each other, build each other up if we're you know getting down from certain business things or getting ideas together. So, in some ways, I think you know you can say it's destined that we had our own company in the end, more so because we were so geared up thinking the same way. Um, about how business should we run? Definitely helps over the years, doesn't it? Yeah. The, um, you know, batting off each other and seeing things similar to uh, have the same sort of vision type thing. Yeah. You said about similarities there. Uh, we we interviewed Hannah and Helen from H and H Coms on Friday, and they spoke. Uh, they they, they uh, spoke in the same way. They said that 80, about 80% of um, their, their, their personality shine are very similar, but there's a 20% uh, difference, and that's like the yin and yang and how that benefits the business. Yeah. And where, with that, man, how, how does that relate to you guys? You know, what, outside of working in a similar way, what, what skills and personality traits do you bring that, that may be different from one another that benefit the business? Yeah, I'd say I'm more sort of geared towards the sales mm. sales focus side of things martin's way better at the um the structural side of you know the operations and so he definitely brings that skill set he's um, the erratic one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> up until from time to time the um <laughs> the um but i'd say that you know Martin's still sales focused but i'd say that's where i'm more driven as such and then for the operational side uh, the structural side, then mine's definitely um, the go-to guy for that, the, uh, which works well for me. Yeah, I think also, I mean, it's also a negative for us that we are probably too similar in some ways, um, too optimistic, too sales-oriented, always believe in the best. Um, 
you know, a lot of decisions we make aren't necessarily made with the best business sense in mind. But one thing we, we're quite good at is 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 uh, getting resources from other people that we know and, and listening to them and getting their advice and ideas on how to run the yeah. company. Um, so we're quite fortunate that um, over here in Bangkok, you meet, we can meet such an array of people, um, mm. you know, from billionaire um, entrepreneurs to, you know, um, somebody that's just trying to get his own little company going. And you pick up ideas from people. And I think if you're always open to listening for ideas and, and don't believe that you know all the answers, then you, there's a lot of things you can implement from that. Um, yeah. It creates more opportunities as well. Yeah. The, um, things that we'd never have thought about before. An opportunity for a small business, then we so we got into it and uh, never expected it, and that's just through you know meeting people out and about, and um, you know never saying never type of thing. And like you say, be, being receptive, listening more than more than speaking, and being receptive to what you're hearing. You yeah. Know, in order to yeah. So so where's where's the, where's the company at, at today then? Um, obviously you you started in Bangkok, but I, I don't believe you you're still just in just in Thailand. Is that right? No, we started, we originally started our first, although we ran the business from here, our first office was in the UK. Um, and then we moved into Australia and, and actually developed a, a sales team in Thailand as well. Um, during the financial downturn in England, and also because the, the hours are quite difficult from here, because it requires people to work up until sort of 11 or 12 o'clock at night. Um, we sort of pulled that back down to, to very little. Uh, we've recently just opened the UK office again. Great timing with COVID, obviously. So <laughs> not quite expanding as fast as we hoped. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we're also looking at, again, this is an opportunity to lay the groundwork for the UK um, and getting things in place while it is a downturn, reaching out to people that need help. And we're building an enormous pipeline um, of people that, at various stages will need what we do over the next you know six to 12 months 18 months as people try and get their businesses back um from the various lockdowns around the world so we, we currently have a presence in three countries um but we have customers and clients from a dozen or so different countries you just touched on on there on on what you do and now with a media company that can be very broad. So are you guys all singing or dancing for everybody? Or, uh, you know, are, are there certain areas of, of real expertise within the business, within the media world? And with that in mind, do you deliver those um, areas of expertise to a certain industry and sector? Yeah, great, great question. Yeah, the, I mean, when we first started out, we were just geared 100% towards SEO, um, mm -hmm. search engine optimization. It's what we knew, it's what we've done best, and you know, got amazing, amazing results. You know, that was 10 years ago, but as, as the industry's evolved and certain markets evolve as well, you we are finding more and more clients were looking for a one-stop shop um, type thing. So we're looking at, you know, AdWords, um, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. So we're looking at all these different services and go, we don't we just want to be, to offer the services and not be able to deliver because then, you know, reviews go up quicker than anything in this day and age, and you get a very bad reputation. So we took our time, but then we employed the right people, put the right people in place. You know, say with Google now, we're a Google Premier Partner, um, which, you know, which is great. We get a lot of um, uh, insights with Google. We have regular meetings with them at their offices as well, um, which has helped excel us, you know, to, to tap into you know, bigger clients as well, big, bigger industries. Uh, and, and Facebook, we're big on Facebook as well. So the, I'd say they're the three main channels from a marketing perspective. Uh, but we've also led into web design and development as well. So a lot of clients before their marketing, they want a new website. So we develop that and we can optimize it all at the same time. So they're the sort of four key areas, SEO, AdWords, and AdWords is so many services under AdWords that people don't realize like YouTube, Google Shopping and what have you. Uh, web design development of Facebook. So uh, there, there are sort of key areas uh, which works well. Uh, in terms of industries, um, I mean, we always pretty much say anyone with a website needs our services, you know, the, um, and the principles are always the same. Uh, 
yes, there's certain terminologies that you need to use and what have you. Um, but industries that we do very well in the, the hotel industry, for an example, uh, we've got a great partnership and we, we deal in Southeast Asia with you know, a lot, a lot of hotels. So that's an industry we really, really do well. I know very, very well. Um, but ultimately, you know, we have we've probably got a couple of hundred clients just across so many different industries. Um, you know, it's quite interesting at times seeing what people do and um, <laughs> you know, learning new things. Yeah. <laughs> So, so being spread across so many industries, have you seen, obviously you, you've mentioned the hotel industry there, I imagine you, you've seen a, a quietening off of that industry in the short term. Have you seen yeah. other industries spike? What's your sort of portfolio look like? Um, yeah, the, I mean, yeah, yeah, as you say, the hotel industry, I mean, they've been absolutely hemorrhaged. You know, it's, uh, it's real, real tough for them at the moment. Uh, but industries that have you know, really spiked, food delivery, I mean, has gone through the absolute roof, you know, because restaurants, restaurants that weren't ever delivering before are now going, well, if we want to stay open and just get some turnover going, we've got to adapt. So mm -hmm. that's an industry that's, that's booming. Uh, private jet hire, that's, that's, that's seen a huge spike. But, yeah, not the, the average Joe type thing out there, but, you know, those uh, with the extra cash can uh, obviously still fly. Um, a lot of that. Logistics. We deal with uh, one of the world's biggest logistic companies out of the UK, and they are just run off their feet. Obviously, yeah. trying to help people move stuff around, it needs to be there more quickly. The medical world, yeah, medical so. supplies, that right. sort of thing. So, um, but uh, I think as well, there's a lot of industries that aren't necessarily booming, but they know that if they maintain their presence, they'll come out stronger. And yeah. So from our perspective, we've got, I mean, we've got some clients that have like the hotels, uh, event organizers that, I mean, they, they, they've got no zero customers mm. and their customers aren't coming back quickly. You know, an event organizer isn't going to be able to, you know, when, when things go back to whatever they get classed as normal, you know, back to work or whatever, companies aren't going to be booking events for their staff that quickly. So they're, they're probably looking at 12 months of zero business. Um, so we're doing things to help them, which we can do internally, which is a sunk cost for us. So just to keep their presence there um, and trying to look at ways of developing what they can do. Uh, same with the hotels. But then other industries or other clients we've got, they've got to turn down on business like us. So we're looking at ways we help them to just keep it ahead of the game. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people are, a lot of people have just shut up shop and gone into panic mode. And unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do to help people in that frame of mind. There's those that, you know, I'm not quite sure where to go, and those that have been very proactive. Um, this is an opportunity for a lot of people to come out stronger yeah, if they I can. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Can you give us any insight into, into what, what some, some of those examples look like for our audience? In terms of look at the opportunities and come out stronger type thing. Yes, some, yeah, some examples. Where are people heading to? How are they becoming stronger? What, what areas of focus are they, are they switching to in order to come out of the yeah. other side of this? Is, better position? I'd say a good example is, say, is actually us. Um, you know, cause this, before we can start looking at things for our clients, we have to look and go, well, how are we going to approach this? You know, every company needs a pipeline. Um, you know, for, for business, if you're focusing on sales, and every business needs sales. So say what we've done with ourselves is gone, well, how do we get ourselves out there and generate more of a pipeline in these circumstances? You know, so we run a Facebook competition. It just ended uh, on Sunday uh, in each country, Thailand, Australia, and the UK, where we're giving away for SMEs or anyone with a business, a chance to win uh, a six month SEO campaign, um, you know, which is free. People have to register, enter, share, like the page. So we built up a really good pipeline in each country of people, you know, three fortunate winners in each country. So that's great for them. But then from our perspective, we've got a pipeline now of people who have businesses who want marketing. And we're giving away a lot of free reports right here, right now to those to help them with their business. So it's, it's quite a selfish way, but it's marketing. So you've got to look at how do you benefit others then which benefits yourself for the short medium and long term so that that's say with ourselves and what we're looking for as well 
for say event hire companies, which Martin touched on a second ago, is you know, that's one of the worst industries to be in at the moment. But it's going well, we've got a wedding planner in Australia. It's like, well, no, no one can plan a wedding right here, right now, but why don't you put something out on Facebook saying we'll give you like a free consultation for your wedding, which is going to be later this year or next year. That way you can win, you go go and enter to win. You've got to, you're building your pipeline then for the future. And you know, you've got to do something right here, right now. Um, I think, I think with a lot of, a lot of businesses have got to shift their thinking to, to what constitutes business for them. I mean, from, from our perspective, you know, if we, we do a, generally speaking, anything that we, we do, we start off by doing an audit of, your Facebook, your AdWords, or your website to see how we can develop it. And then we then we put in place the, the work that he's doing. And all this comes with a cost. Well, from our perspective, the audits are done internally, so it's a sunk cost. We've already, we're already committed to paying the salaries of the staff here. So I want to keep them busy. Yeah, if I'm going to keep paying them, I want to keep them busy. And over here in Thailand, we can't furlough people uh, and get support from the government. We can furlough them, but they don't get paid. Um, <laughs> So there's not the support structure that Australia and the UK government are offering for employees. So we're, we're looking at, okay, we'll, we'll keep our, our staff employed and keep them occupied. And, and what we're doing is reaching out to people and saying, so what we, we see we can do is this doesn't really cost us anything extra to do. It's all, we're already a sunk cost. So if we give them something they can work on to help develop their digital marketing for the future, when they, when they get out of this, who are they going to come back to, to, to ask for more professional help and more paid help? So I look at with clients and we're saying to clients, what, what is it, you know, what, what is your business model and what is it you're able to do? So you take the wedding planner. The first stage of the wedding planner is to sit down with, with couples and say, right, what do you want to have? What are you looking for? And develop it. That. With Zoom or Google Hangouts or Google Meets or Skype, they can contact couples that are looking to get married and say, look, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you your first consultation for free. This is what we'd normally charge for. Let's get things in place. So I'm going to give you a, a, a plan of action. We can have an hour meeting on Zoom. Now, it, all it costs is time for the wedding planner, who's locked down at home anyway. <laughs> the, the, the client she's got are locked down at home. But what you've built then is a contact of somebody that if they can afford it or they want to, that they're going to come back to you for future services and event organizers i'm saying well set up for when people get back to normal why not go and do a one hour session with a company for free saying this is what our events are like uh let's give you a taster event or whatever why because everybody that inquires for that becomes a a future customer to go back to and market to and it's we're really focusing on saying to people build your pipeline and if you get that pipeline, you've then got people that are interested in your services to talk to as soon as things are back to normal. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, th I think that's, that's where people will come out stronger because normally you're so busy with the day-to-day -day running of the company that you don't have the time to focus on this. So use it wisely. Yeah, and the asset that you've built up over the years of the experience of the industry and the experience of what the clients actually want to talk about and want want to uh, the problems that they want solving. You kind of take it for granted, don't you? But now is a great time for reflection, and those conversations can move so much further because you um, you've got, like you say, people are prepared to spend time now. Yeah. Before it was spending money, but now it's spending time. And if you lead with value, and then as opposed to a, a monetary transaction. Values and benefits, yeah. The excuse of not having time doesn't wash anymore, does it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, there's some great resources out there for free as well. Um, you know, we'll send you these links as well. But they, you know, That'd be great. Google's Academy. Um, I say so they keep changing their name on it, but they do like uh, courses on how to run AdWords, and, and they give you tests on it on that. But they also have things like your know, sales courses. Um, other marketing courses we get related to their products or around their products, but not directly that you have to be an expert in, in running Google AdWords. And 
you know, if, you, if you're running a small company, everybody's at home, and you, your marketing department are pretty much not doing very much, get them to do some online courses, learn about marketing. Even if the person's not in marketing, there's nothing wrong with your secretary or your admin team learning about marketing practices. And, and they're, they're interesting, they're very simple, easy courses to take with a, a Q&A at the end of it, as it were, that, that gives you a great, you get a little badge from Google that says you, you've passed a course. Um, so, so there's lots of online learning stuff that people can do. Learn how to produce content for your website that's uh, valuable content that gives people real information. Not only does it help your website improving in Google, but it will also attract people to it. And you're giving away knowledge. Knowledge-based marketing these days is, is massive. Um, we do a lot of it over here in Thailand. We do it within different uh, chambers of commerce. Um, we've run our own seminars as well, where you're not doing a direct sales pitch to people. You're, you're a bit like this. You're, you're talking about ways of helping people out. Um, the whole concept of your, your series at the moment on your, on your show is what, what's going on in business. Knowledge-based marketing is, is very, very strong because you're then seen as a go-to resource. Yeah. Uh, the dividend pays back a lot more later, but much better than just straightforward. It, it, also, it also filters as well, doesn't it? Because a five minute video, if people are only engaged for the first 30 seconds, they're, they're, not, they're not ready to, to discuss it further with you. If someone yeah. watches it all the way through, then you've, they're pre-qualified. There's a further conversation to have there. A hundred percent agree with that one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so in your, in your, um, in your industry, it's so like right now, is there anything that you keep seeing companies do? that it's like a real low hanging fruit. It's like, I can't believe people are still not, or they're still doing it this way. Yeah, it's just, it's just those, those basic, basic sort of thing. There's an absolute gem of a one here, yeah. The, um, anyone who has an AdWords account, yeah, before they come on board with us, we say, look, we'll do a free audit, first of all, just so we can see if we can actually make it better. I mean, 99.999 recurring, you know, is we can help is that they have their settings. So say if they only in the UK and they don't sell overseas, yeah, they won't have, they'll have their settings set up wrong and then we're getting clicks from all over the world and just costing them money. Right. So it's, it's a great one for us really, you know, because we just go, <laughs> right, boom, we'll cut you off here, you know, stop this, that pays for our management fees, happy days, you know. Um, <laughs> Cost neutral. That, that's, you know, but that happens all the time. We do these every day and you know, people just don't, don't have it set up correctly. And, you can't blame anyone, but it's, it's when you see other agencies, though, who have set it up incorrectly, you go, you know, it's bad form. Yeah. But, uh, but that's, it's, that's it's so easy. Well, it's so easy to stop as well. Mm. The, um, it, it, it's purely laziness on the setting within, within yeah. your AdWords campaign. I mean, the nice thing being here is if we're dealing with people in the UK, Australia, is we call them up and saying, we can see your advert. Yeah. If I click uh, on it right now, you'll pay for it, but I'm, I'm never going to use your service because you're in the UK. You know? yeah. yeah, I don't need a UK electrician out here, thanks. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, is, it is that. Yeah, I'm sure the electrician would love to come over here, but, you know, and hammer the margins, I reckon. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the, thing people have, the thing people have to remember is, is that things like AdWords will never get cheaper. It will only get more expensive because it's, it's based on a bidding system. And, and the more valuable it becomes, the more people that want to be there for it. And I mean, Google, I actually think Google's reasonably fair with the way they do it. They obviously make a lot of money out of it. Um, but Google also provides an enormous amount of resource to the world for free. Look at Google Maps. Look at, you know, the way you can navigate the world now without a... Although, just to say, it never gets cheaper. <laughs> At the moment, I mean, things well, like... Actually, yeah, it has got a bit cheaper through COVID because the likes of Amazon have pulled a load of their products off. Yeah. Um, so actually for certain certain industries, the, 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 C, uh, the, the CPC, the cost yeah. per click has actually gone down by around about 10%. Well, we're booking.com have uh, slashed their budgets for obvious reasons. Mm. The, yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah. actually for hotels right now, running AdWords for your own hotel for future bookies is not a bad idea. It's cheaper than it'll ever be. Um, but yeah, so there's lots of things like that, that that people can focus on as ways of um getting themselves some benefit right now and, and, and grab the easy stuff that's out there 
Yeah, and I, I guess the um, the moral there is if you can get out of the, the panic mode and, and the fear and actually raise your vision to in six months' time, nine months' yeah. time, so then all of a sudden there's lots that you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would, I would say there's like this, there's three types of people, three types of businesses through this. There's, there's those that panic, uh, you know, shut up shop, go, you know, apocalypse and um, don't do anything, you know. You get the, the second group who are sitting on the fence, not sure, need a bit of an arm around them to say, well, is it the right thing to do or not? And if it is, we'll actually guide them. And then you get the third group are going proactive, going, look, let's find the opportunities. Because there is opportunities somewhere in every industry. Yeah. You might have to delve a bit deeper in some industries to find them. But, you know, if you, if you think about it and be creative enough, you, you can find stuff. And, and Phil, what you said then is you have to be looking ahead because, you know, it is going to disappear. It is going to go away. Or you, the restrictions are going to be lifted. And where are you going to be sitting in six months' time? And that's what you've really got to, really got to think of. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Can you guys give us a little bit of uh, a little insight into how Thailand have dealt with this, uh, the, the, the COVID-19 uh, the virus from a business point? I mean, I, I bet the traffic's uh, very different at the moment out there in Bangkok. Traffic, yeah. Yeah, it usually takes about an hour and a half to get into the office. It takes 20, 22 minutes now. The... Um, not that we're counting, the, um, <laughs> but yeah, the traffic's a dream. It's, I mean, Thailand's one of the least affected countries in the world for, for COVID. I think there's been about two and a half thousand deaths, uh, no. two and a half thousand uh, cases. 48 deaths. And 48 deaths. Oh, and wow. We've got a that curfew at the long. moment from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. There's a curfew. Um, there's also some erratic things like the curfew. Because most people aren't out anyway. Um, they've shut. They shut. The first thing they did was they're quite quick at closing restaurants and bars, uh, and then followed quite quickly by shops and only allowing takeaway food. Um, the the advice is they'd like people to stay at home. Um, I'd say the majority of people have worked from home for companies that have kept their jobs. A lot of people have lost their jobs. People have just shut down. But Thailand, like most of Asia, they're very quick to put face masks on. Um, and obviously there's a lot of conflicting evidence on whether face masks work or not. Um, but it does, I mean, everyone over here wears a face mask. In fact, you get looked at really strangely if you don't have one on. And certain shops won't let you in without one. So um, it, I, I think I, I, they're very reactive. But I, don't, I think with, like, with a lot of governments, they really don't know what to do. And in the end, they have to look to be severe on the basis of uh, if they don't and it goes wrong, they'll be blamed. So, I mean, where I'd say it's affected, I mean, it's always the um, the lower income yeah. people, if that's the right way to put it, yeah. uh, who are most affected. And, and obviously Thailand, um, you know, Bangkok's like a first world city and a third world country type thing. We got a lot of street food sellers, you know, who aren't around anymore, and you know, it's very, very tough for for an awful lot of people, mm. um, which I think could have maybe been dealt with it slightly differently. Um, but it is what it is, and and governments show all across the world. I think they're in a lose lose situation because there's always going to be people who think that it's the wrong decision they've made and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, for. From our perspective, I mean, yes, we've been affected because uh, clients have paused their campaigns, some of them. We're also very fortunate to be in an industry where we can turn it all around and go and target specific industries, um, you know, which haven't been so affected by it. And what is life like personally in Thailand? We, Phil and I are huge fans. It's, I know it's, uh, I think what I speak for both of us, it's our favourite country in the world from the crazy cities to the tropical beaches and um so we're huge fans and have spent a chunk of time out there at different and we're going to see you in october this year yeah well well let's yeah let's hope so let's hope so for sure this power <laughs> I know, but, the worst places to be locked down right there, there, there certainly is yeah east yorkshire being one of them <laughs> <laughs> Well, what is life like for you guys out in, in, in Thailand? What, what, you know, what, we love it. You know, there'll, be, there'll be many listeners and, and viewers who have never been. Who it, it's, always on, it's often on people's bucket lists, isn't it, to visit yeah. Thailand. Yeah. And 
it's not as cheap as it used to be. No, that's for sure. That's the, the, the bit of a misconception that life's a lot cheaper, I'd say it isn't. Uh, I, I've been here 20 years now, and um, it's definitely, definitely not as cheap as it used to be. Uh, but yeah. a lot of things have changed in that time. I mean, I pretty much can get any any food or drink that you can get overseas, you can get over here now. Um, transportation's way better, you know, the roads are busier, but SkyTrain is more extensive, the subway is more extensive, um, internal cheap flights are easy. I mean, it's definitely, you know, overall, knocking on the door of being a first world country at some point. Um, I'd say it's, it's something for everyone though. I mean, if you're single, you're married, you're retired, you know, there really is. And you can go from cheapest chips to, you know, top end restaurants, everything in the middle. So a great place to live, I must say. The, uh, and it's a great hub for other countries in Asia as well to disappear off to for a weekend or so. And the weather's quite good. Yeah. <laughs> the weather is quite good, yeah. I think officially it's the most, it's the, the most visited country in the world. I think that is the official. Is, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, the, the the official stat there, and I, think I first I first um, experienced Thai, a, a Thai trip in two thousand and three, and it was about eighty baht for the pound back then. Okay. And is it those are the days? They were yeah. the days. Those, those are the days, and I think it was like two pound fifty for a beach hut over the ocean, and uh, and now it's what is it? That's still there. <laughs> is it, yeah, well, and is it about what is it now? It's about thirty eight, forty. Has it gone up? Yeah, yeah. 40 to the pound and what would what would have been two pound fifties now about 19 or 20 pound and yeah those were the days but what yeah. an absolutely fantastic you country you about the very first beach hut i ever stayed in over here was in Chang, and that was like you say about two pound fifty three pounds likewise Chang. yeah Chang. conditioning as well that same hut is still there today and they charge now about 40, 50 quid a night for it. And you go, nothing's changed. You probably haven't even changed the mattress. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Has it still got your name scribed in one of the, the beans? Just, about, I, just I below really, yours, yeah, James. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Phil, what, what year did you first hit Thailand, Phil? Uh, so we got married in 2007. Our first holiday will have been in 2004 uh, to Koh Samui. We, just, yeah. um, we landed in... Uh, I think it was Singapore, but we didn't. We knew we didn't want to stay there, so we just got the first flight out. We didn't know where we were going, and it just happened to be Samui. And we went back every year for at least ten years, um, oh, yeah. at least at least once a year to somewhere in Thailand. Um, but yeah, same same stories. We were on um, on Samui in the main strip there, Shuang. And the first time we stayed, we I mean we weren't quite. Two pound fifty a night. We were probably ten pound a night by this point, but it was. Oh, amazing. Really? We had a oh, we had a condo. I bet you guys just had a fan. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we were lording it. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. and now, <laughs> as 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 it's extended, as it's expanded out, where that was because that was levelled, would be pretty much bang in the centre of the strip yeah. now. And obviously, it's just grown and grown and grown and grown yeah. and grown yeah, out. Yeah, but just such good memories, such an amazing, amazing, carefree place. Uh, yeah. If, yeah. Four, four kids and responsibilities, you know. <laughs> well, we, we were last, we were last, we were last uh, on Samui in August last year, actually. Oh, right. Oh, uh, nice. And yeah, we certainly noticed tra traveling, we travel as a group of six. Um, we certainly noticed the difference in the exchange right now. Uh, and and taxes cost a lot more, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, it, you because uh, you, you, you can't get anything standard either. So uh, yeah, the, the island mafia have got that one turned. Uh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's funny. I was you... last out. I was there last year. Did six. Well, I landed December, left in mid February. So I was out for a stint and did about six weeks in Chiang Mai and hit the islands and Bangkok and you met up with up, Mike. <laughs> I do actually because I wasn't drinking. I had four months of uh, of no drinking from October to. And I, I came off the wagon on a rooftop in Bangkok. There was a fridge full of craft beers and my couple of friends were over from the UK. And, uh, and it was one of those nights where we just went, do you know what? Like, if we're going to do it, now is it. And we just went right through the fridge on all the different beers. And oh, it was, it was, I ended up down Kaosan Road at 5am drinking, uh, drinking Chang, Chang beers. It was, 
it was a wonderful evening. We, we just uh, just relived it uh, about a week ago. I zoomed them and we, we spoke about that trip. That was uh, immense. And the reason why we guys have, have hooked up is through Mikey. Mikey Herrera was um, yes. I met Mikey in Bangkok five years ago, and he was DJing, and I, I DJ too. And at the end of it, I was just like, oh, um, I'm a DJ. Great, love your set. Um, you know, if there's ever any opportunity, and it's all. Oh, if you point to see SoundCloud and stuff, I said, well, I've got a gig to, tomorrow. Why don't you come and play with me and we'll do back to back and we'll just have a laugh. Right. And, and he said that of all the years he's helped and supported uh, Thai DJs or foreign DJs, he's never had the favour returned in that way. And there I was coming up and just going, just come and join me and we'll, we'll just get along yeah, and yeah. see how it works. And, and that really stood out, that stood out to him. And we've been firm friends ever since. I know Mikey's yeah, looked after the likes of the, the Beastie Boys and Calvin Harris when they've come over to, uh, yeah, to, yeah. to Bangkok. So um, what would be great is actually we'll, we'll, uh, we'll hook up with Mikey. And it'd be good to, um, if we, if we uh, interview him, if he provides some, actually, some industry knowledge on some resources and tips and tricks as well, that'd be, that'd be great to get him on the show and, and reconnect as well. That'd be yeah, awesome. Yeah. Absolutely, let's do it, yeah. I'm going to be on this, but you got all nervous. <laughs> <laughs> he does. I think, I, I think... I think I bring the nerves out in him, though, gentlemen. I think that's that's maybe for me to play. Maybe I'll maybe I'll dip out of the next one. Phil, you can uh, you can calm those nerves of him. But no, really lovely guy. I love love Mikey to bits. DJ, and uh, DJ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it would be great to reconnect reconnect with him anyway. But um um before we wrap up, gentlemen, where can people find you? Where where what your know, website links and your social hooks? Uh, search for Move Ahead Media and. You get there's either a .co.uk, a .com.au, or a .co.th. Um, but pretty much in any of the countries, just look for our name and um, our name, and you'll you'll find us. <laughs> yeah. Um, just a quick summary for you and for your listeners and that the uh, on resources and that you you can go to Google for resources. You can go to things like Semrush. You can go to uh, Rank Trackers. Uh, there are lots of companies that will give you free trial campaigns to analyze your website and see what you can do to improve it. If you do nothing else during this period, improve the state of your website yeah. and you'll come out stronger. Yeah. And if, and if all else fails, contact us and we'll give you a free report and tell you what to do. Brilliant. Uh, it's, very it's, been, it's been a pleasure and, and Phil and I will definitely take you up on your uh, workplace offer uh, that's expenses paid isn't it to come over and yes, to yes, fly yes. over and yeah, so that's, that's yeah. <laughs> fix the plug socket while you're here as well <laughs> 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 well, we will look. We'll look forward to connecting you with you guys um, for sure as we we get through this. I mean, it's clear we're we're, we're aligned with our thinking, and certainly we we clearly buzz about business, and, and we we all work in media as well. So, um, and we will certainly look forward to those beers in Bangkok in the very yeah, near future. Hundred percent. The uh, I'm, quite a, I'm quite a good tour guide when it comes to um, seeing some of the sites in Bangkok. The, um, Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Yeah, a lot of see we've just met but let's keep in touch because you know you guys do some great stuff and um you know we'd love to you know see if we can do more stuff together as well in the future yeah um, absolutely yeah, uh, yeah great it's been a pleasure gents it's been brilliant yeah cheers Phil. thank you very much cheers, yeah, yeah, cheers. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. 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 Thank you so much for joining us on the Business Lockdown. Please comment, like, share and subscribe to help build our global community. We look forward to seeing you all soon.